Yeah. And now we're going to get this thing going. All right. Good. We're back. Real Singers on Singing with attempt number two at episode number 19 of uh, Real Singers on Singing podcast. This is Opera Singers Do It Better. And I'm here with my friend. I'm calling him my friend now because we see each other a lot. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Rafael Vasquez. Hey, well done. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, right. Name it. Okay. Yeah. Very, I don't know if I was supposed good. to put any th 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 in there or anything like that. I know. So. That's okay. That's okay, man. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm doing these series with uh, different opera singers, and I'm going to. Uh, I, I I've always been into uh, looking up different techniques and where the different uh, how uh, 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 Pavarotti learned from Pola and. Uh, Raimondi helped it help Pavarotti later in his career, and mm. uh, Morella Freyne taught many many people. My, uh, my teacher Alex Cariotis actually studied with Pola and Raimondi, and uh, nice. and I always like hearing about the different schools. And one school that has always popped up has been the Maloki school, Arturo yeah. Arturo Maloki, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's him. Had, he had some famous students. He had Franco Corelli, Mario Delmonico, as, as we know. Like, those are the two tenors uh, the, of the past that everyone just – everyone loves them. There's no – there's mm. no doubt. There's no, no doubt. So um, – and we also have um, also someone who I really liked who studied – where is he, though? I'm looking I'm, – I'm looking at a little list right now of names. But he, he – oh, maybe he did not study with did, – did, did Martinucci study with him or Martinucci study with Delmonico? <laughs> Actually, you know, that's the, that's the thing, you know, in 1960, uh, Arturo Melocchi dies and uh, Gastone Limarigli, who was uh, a student of uh, Melocchi, suggested uh, Mario del Monaco's brother, so Marcello del Monaco, to carry on, say, you know, I mean, you, you're a baritone, you have a very nice voice, but you are very smart and, uh, you know, you, you were born for teaching. Please, you know, carry on. And from that sort of generation came along people such as Nicola Martinucci, uh, Gianfranco Cecchile, um, uh, uh, Giacomini, uh, and, and many other uh, big names. So uh, it, it was basically the, you know, the, the continuation the of the like, yeah, During yeah, absolutely, period. yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, you started as a, you were a lawyer. Yeah. Right. So I know this about you now. You're loyal and, and a personal trainer as of now, which I love. I love that. I mean, I'm really into fitness and stuff too. So I think that's yeah. great. And it's great. And, um, mm -hmm. but you started as a lawyer. And then when you were going to, I'll let you explain, you went to college and then mm -hmm. they were, you took a voice class just because you wanted yeah. to, yeah. You, were, you were rock and roll and <laughs> you wanted to learn a little bit more about singing. And, and then I'll let you go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, as I told that last time, um, in in Spain, not very much nowadays, but back in the um, up, up to actually the the nineties, and I would say the two thousands, uh, there used to be it's still going on, but it's a dying breed, right? Uh, they sort of brotherhood, you know, like like you have in in, in college, uh, in 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 the, in the states, right? These brotherhoods, uh, immediately the name, you know, skull and, skull and bones, you know, comes to my oh, mind. But fraternity. It's, it's, exactly, fraternity. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what these guys do um, is basically they play folklore, Spanish folklore and Latin American folklore. And uh, they dress in a very peculiar sort of way. Uh, they dressed like they did in the basically Middle Ages. We're talking in the 1500s. Uh, so all in, in black velvet. That's why, you know, I told you like Batman, right? And you, you, it's like men in tights, you know, men in tights because we in tights uh, because you, you were tights and uh, and shorts and stuff. So it's kind of, you know, I'll send you a picture you know, so you get the image. And um uh, and basically, you know, me coming from um, studying my my high school uh, degree or my high school, basically in the in the states in South in Southford, Pennsylvania, not far from from Pittsburgh, um, I was kind of lost. Uh, I was and I was a very shy guy, very sort of introvert, 
And uh, I didn't have a clue about singing music or playing the guitar or the mandolin or anything that this would these guys do. But um, I, was, I was drawn into this sort of bohemian sort of life. Of, of playing, you know, in the streets and, and serenading women in the balconies, a bit like, like you know, Don Giovanni, you know, that, and, uh, and, uh, and that's how it started because uh, obviously, believe it or not, your voice develops uh, when you do such things, you know, it's like joining a, a chorus, but it's a, a very strong male chorus. And, um, and I say this because, because sometimes I have received some students that come from these kind of groups and their, their voices are, their voices are massive. They're out of control. They're out of whack, but the potential is unbelievable. And in Spain, we have, uh, and we have had quite a few um, uh, operatic singers that came from that tradition. And yeah, I, I can count uh, myself among among them. And uh, during that period, yeah, yeah we, we we celebrated uh, these sort of national competitions. And at some point, uh, my friends told me, you know, there is a special prize for the soloist prize. If you have a good solo singer, they basically um, I don't know arrange a song so the soloist of the group. Yeah, shows off and, and, and has the option uh, to, to win that prize. And at the beginning, when they told me, I said, oh, come on, man, you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, they said, oh, no, you have a nice voice. And I, and I used to say, yeah, I have a nice voice at three o'clock in the morning when, I, when I'm smashed right. and I'm trying to, you know, you know, to, to pull this girl that is on the second floor <laughs> and uh, screaming my lines out. But so it happened that um, I, re- I, th- I believe it was in 95, I believe, I won my first national competition singing uh, uh, sort of an aria or a, or a romance of um, what we call in Spanish, uh, Zarzuela, which is kind of the equivalent of opereta or singspiel, yeah? Um, and, uh, and from then on, uh, I got involved, you know, I said, okay, well, you, ha- you have a nice voice. We have more competitions. So you should find yourself a, um, a singing teacher. And, uh, and I found this guy um, and, and I told him, listen, I mean, I have no ambitions. I mean, I just, you know, uh, <laughs> I just want to have fun and I can get as many girls as I can. <laughs> and, uh, and that was it. He basically taught me, taught me the basics, but back in the day, um, it was all the, the you know, the, the same thing, you know, a lot of the mask and, and whatnot. Right. Uh, but, but somehow he introduced me to um, basically, you know, more than, other, than, than any other thing to listening, listening to the great singers the, of, the, of the past, um, starting with Caruso. You know, Caruso was a great influence. And then, of course, uh, Mario Lanza, same thing, you know, and I fell in love, you know, I saw uh, the, the great Caruso, Signorina Dorothy, Signorina Dorothy, right? Yeah. And, and I fell in love with the, with the character, with, with the whole, uh, I don't know, the world of it. I know, you know, it was not, it's, it's a movie after all, but anyway, I fell in love with that. Um, and I started also listening to, uh, you know, uh, I think I came across uh, Del Monaco and uh, uh, Franco Corelli and, uh, yeah, and a few, you know, the, you know, Bergonzi. I was, I was never very much into uh, Placido Domingo, for example, or Alfredo Kraus, for, for that matter. I, I somehow, I, I didn't identify myself with that kind of sound, but... Uh, you know, you give me Caruso and, and, and still to this day, you know, give me goosebumps. Right. And, um, and that had a, 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 an enormous influence in my singing because no matter what people <laughs> wanted to teach me, I would always go back <laughs> to that, right. to, to this sort of uh, very pharyngeal uh, sort of, uh, I, I don't know how to describe this this metal, you know, because it's not golden. I would say sort of bronze kind of uh, voice, right? 
Yeah, you know, I, I wrote yeah. a little note down. As you talk, I, you might see me going like this. I'm writing things down. So I yeah. can, it's kind of coming up now. You know, you, you said in the beginning you were kind of introverted, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Shy. To me, when I when I listen to you speak, as you're talking, it's really it's really yeah. sucky being like a, being an interviewer, kind of because I would like to listen to this because I'm sitting yeah. listening to you. But what I'm hearing is this really strong, loud, colorful voice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, you know, I can hear I, I hear the I hear the buzz of the vocal cords. I hear the, right. I hear the sound here. I I'm this is yeah. my, nerd, my nerd self is going. Man, listen to that buzz. Listen to that placement. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if you were in a room, I'm sure I would hear you across the room. Yeah, bless you. Yeah. Now, well, is, is this cultivated, or was did you did you always kind of have your same speaking voice? No, no, no. Um, actually, uh, you know, you, you're gonna have a laugh because <laughs> I remember, you know, of course, my biggest fan ever has been my grandmother who, who just turned nine, 95. I mean, wow. uh, you know, it's, it's just, um, it's the alcohol. He, she, she, she's allergic to water, you know? <laughs> so anyway, and, uh, and I remember that at the beginning of my sort of singing adventure, um, everybody advised me, right? Uh, and, and I suppose they had the reasons. But it, it, it never matched my personality uh, that, that I had to talk in, in, in like, like high and light because I was a tenor. So there's, you know, and I, and I studied in the UK. So it was this kind of, oh, how are you? Oh, everything OK? Yes. Oh, oh I'm a tenor. Yes, you too. Oh, 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 oh. All day long. Right. And uh, and I remember that sometimes I, I would answer the, the phone. Right. And uh, and the person on the on the other side of the phone would say, "Excuse me, madam," <laughs> and that would piss me off. All right, I was like, "I'm a man, you know, I am a man." What are you talking about, right? Uh, and even uh, my my grandmother, when I when I started, uh, you know, the the, the Meloki sort of uh, method. I mean, I started studying with McRae after just uh, a, a matter of months. I remember coming back to Spain and talking to her and, and she telling me, God, you, you finally sound like a man, you know? <laughs> Which was, yeah, God. so boom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> granny, granny just hit me, right? Uh, so what had happened? What had happened is that, uh, I, I, I will talk about it later if you want, is that Basically, my pharynx, which, which at least, uh, you know, according to uh, my school of, of, of singing, the pharynx is the main resonator, the pharynx. So once you, 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 your pharynx is open, that's it. That's it. That, that's your voice. If you're a tenor, the, 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 the sound is going to sound more robust. If you're a baritone, what? Let me tell you about it. If you are a bass. If you're a soprano, if you're a mezzo, so the pharynx is the main resonator. Once you get that down, your voice uh, just basically goes there. It's like primal. It's, it's very primitive, and uh, and maybe that's what you're 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 maybe perceiving. My voice definitely changed once I I I, I started with my cray, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. then, uh, so back to so you you did some competitions. You started, then you then you decided I I like this. I want to do this. You fell in love with the art. You fell in love with the art. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, how did you find McRae? Okay, well, uh, it's a bit of a long story because uh, and uh, you know, but I I'll try to you know. I think last time I talked too much because I was very excited and, and yeah, we stuff. Both were, yeah, but, so you could sum it up, like sum it up how it kind of yeah. How you how you sure. how you found each other really is what we talked about. Good, yeah. Well, what what happened to me is that um, after my my lawyer days, uh, in, you know, I was I was never meant to be a lawyer, but anyway, <laughs> I, I, I I as I told you, you know, I would have ended in jail if I, had I continued. But anyway, uh, I had I have my own place in hell, so that's 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 good enough. <laughs> Um, I, I, I basically um, uh, gained a, a big, very big scholarship um, given by the British Council um, to 
research environmental law and lecture at the University of Nottingham in uh, in in the UK. Sounds so. Um, it sounds so precise. Okay. University of it, Nottingham. Yeah, Nottingham. I, and you know what? See, I had this sort of semi-American accent, which I love very much because of the twang and all that. And I remember my first days of lecturing, and they took me aside and they said, uh, "Listen, sir, um, if you want to continue lecturing here." you must change your accent. British accent is required, you know? So, so they, they made me. Amazing. Yeah, I, I know, man. It's it was, it was, it was kind of funny. Wow. So I had to modify uh, uh, my, my, yeah, my, my English in a way. And, uh, and my, my voice in, 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 in a way also, because, you know, the, the, the resonances are different. I mean, if you're, if you're English, uh, you know, it's the closest thing to swallowing your own tongue. <laughs> it's a, you know, yeah. people people can speak without opening their mouth. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I was in, in Nottingham, uh, uh, Nottingham University, and um, and I, for some reason, singing was in my you know unconscious mind the whole time. Um, I had done several uh, amateur concerts, singing, for example, I don't know, whatever, Carmen Traviata and uh, Spanish sort of operetta, um, nothing serious, you know, a piano in some village and whatever, but always trying to imitate, to impersonate these, these great singers. And the result was good. Uh, the, you know, I, 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 I still have recordings from the, those days and, and I amazed myself, said, my God, man, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, sure. I couldn't replicate it later on. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, it's just pure instinct. And so what happened is that one of these days, uh, I went to my favorite shop. Obviously, I was a nerd. And uh, there was a classical music shop, you know, it's tons of CDs and whatnot. And um, I was buying my typical tenor, you know, CD. And, um, and I came across an ad of a soprano called Linda Gerard. And uh, she basically gave um, vocal tuition. Uh, so I, I called her and arranged a meeting or, or you know, and, uh, and I just went there and I just did what I knew, what, you know, what I, what I knew <laughs> what to do. And um, yeah, she, she, she seemed kind of shocked, like, whoa, uh, you're a bit of a wild, you know, wild horse. And uh, after about two or three sessions with her, she told me, listen, you, you know what? I, I can't, I can't deal with you. I mean, you know, <laughs> and I said, what, do I suck or something? Right. And she said, no, no. I mean, you, you need somebody else. You need, you need uh, proper guidance. Um, but, but at that time, honestly, I, I didn't have any ambition, um, you know, to become a, a pro, not at all. But nevertheless, I think she saw something in me. And uh, she told me, you're going to go to my teacher, Pamela Cook. God bless her. Marvelous. I mean, I have anecdotes, you know, that, that, that would be for, for another big podcast. But I remember uh, in one of her lessons, I, I just, you know, I, I, I sang whatever not it was. And uh, she would look at me, you know, with, with the glasses, you know, like that, you know. And she would say, why did you do that? And I would I immediately... Immediately, I would go like frantic, like, oh, perhaps, I don't know, my, my palate was not raised enough, or maybe my diaphragm. And, and then the answer was epic. She would say, perhaps it's because you're an idiot. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love you too, right? Oh, yeah. that, was, that, that was Pamela, bless her soul. Um, so Pamela Cook uh, taught me, a lot and introduced me actually into the world of music because I didn't know anything about it. Uh, it she introduced me also um, in the world into the world of repertoire because at that time I only knew that there was a guy called Puccini that made you know like wonderful music and Verdi and uh, yeah there was this, this this aria called Una Furtiva Lagrima from from Donizetti but I didn't know anything else. So. <clears throat> 
Pamela Cook basically opened my eyes into the uh, the real world, and uh, she was the one that believed in me in the sense that she risked she risked her reputation by sending me to the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London, uh, a, a very prestigious, you know, it's like the equivalent of the of Juilliard in in New York, but here in Europe, basically, and. Uh, and I said, what are you talking about? You know, do you think I can make it? You think I, I can become a professional singer? And she said, hey, would I risk my neck if I, you know, didn't believe in that? And uh, I said, okay, well, let's do it. Let's, let's go. And uh, so I went to London and uh, little did I know. I mean, I was so naive. I, 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 you know, these memories really uh, are fantastic. Um, I went to, to London, you know, and uh, I went to the Guildhall and it was so, I don't know, it was so impressive, you know, the building, the Barbican Center. And it was like, well, wow, you know, and, um, and I met this guy, you know, very tall guy, huge hands. I remember Robin Bowman, an amazing pianist, too intelligent for this world, honestly, you know, yeah. have you ever come across these, these, these kind of people that you say, yeah. He's so intelligent that he lacks common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was Robin Bowman. That, that, that was him. And he, he happened to be the head of the vocal department at the Guildhall. Um, and there I was, a wild tenor that did not read music, didn't know what a high C was, even though maybe I was singing them, and uh, that only knew how to sing one aria from... Traviata, another one from Rigoletto, and uh, I had learned a, a couple of songs from Bellini, and uh, and that's it, you know. So, so the guy told me, okay, so just, just you know, yeah, you, give it to me, baby, and uh, and I sang, and of course I didn't respect every single note, measure, you know, tempo, whatever. I drove the guy nuts, but. You know, he accompanied me the best he could. And, uh, uh, and, and then he, he basically stopped. And I was like, okay, nice. Now, now, now is when he's going to tell me, okay, just excuse my French, fuck off, right? <laughs> like, you suck. Yeah, right. uh, but actually, something caught his attention. And, and he said, would you mind waiting for a minute? And I said, yeah, sir. yeah, of course, sir, you know. Um, so he brought in, into the room another guy, another, an, another uh, you know, head of, right. actually, he was the head of the um, uh, opera studies, Clive Teams, a wonderful conductor and uh, somebody that really, honestly, I, I, I owe him a lot. And, and he said, could you please... Uh, sing again, you know, and I sang again or screamed again, Rigoletto, Traviata, the Bellini stuff. Right. And I just, you know, I, I could sing it all day long. And, and the girl said, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting, yeah. Um, I, at the end, you know, to, to make things a bit shorter, Robin Bowman said, okay, I want you here in September. And I said, uh, hello? Hi, hey, hey, you know, Houston, call, you know, Houston, you know, are you there? I said, are you kidding me? Well, what do you mean? Uh, this is college. This is not even junior college. This is like the shit. This is, this is it. And, and I said, I don't know how to read music. Right. I don't know anything about this. And he said, oh, we'll, we'll take care of that. You know, we, we, so I was kind of a diamond in the rough for these people. Uh, of course, needless to say, I was, I was happy as happy right, right. somebody can be. Um, I, but, but also he recommended me to attend uh, uh, what they, you know, in the UK, they, they, they really have a fantastic, um, how could I say, infrastructure for, for education. I mean, music is really important and, and people take it very seriously. So... There was this summer camp, summer camp at Abingdon, which is a place in the south of England. And he told me to, to attend that summer camp, basically to refine a bit my gifts, 
so to speak. Um, and I, I attended that. I prepared some repertoire for some some French songs and some German lead. I didn't I didn't know anything about it. And uh, I met incredible people. And the most incredible person I met during that course was, uh, you know, somebody that later on became my my long term teacher, uh, Adrian Thompson, who was a, a renowned um, English tenor. Now, we, we have to keep in mind that English tenors have a very peculiar voice because of their language. So, they, so you compare an English tenor and an American tenor, and they have nothing in common. It's, it's unbelievable. So an English tenor, usually we make fun of them because they have this canoodle sort of sound, you know, and they sing the message, you know, uh, but anyway, Adrian, Adrian was very smart. Um, he was super smart. He, uh, and, and he didn't want me to change in a way. So that's the famous phrase that I told you. He, he listened to me blasting away Rigoletto uh, again and again, not respecting anything, you know, no dynamics, right. no tempo, nothing. And uh, he said, you know what, son, I think, you know, uh, I think there, you have something, but you need somebody to take care of you. And that was it. Those were the words that I needed to hear. And I said, are you going to be that person? Are you going to take care of me? And he said, if you want me to, I will. And I said, done deal, right. done deal. And uh, that relationship lasted for, you know, basically until I met McRae. So that, that was it. He, he was the one. Um, and he taught me many things, but there is a but. He didn't develop my voice. Basically, my voice stayed the same, right? I learned, uh, you know, technical resources and, of course, music and style and whatnot. Yeah, style, musicality. Right? Yeah, but I was still sort of a light tenor. He wasn't giving you the squats and the deadlifts you needed to get stronger. There you go. Absolutely. I, you could, I couldn't have put it better because... Because that was it. That's that. That's what 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 I was needing, and I didn't know how to do it myself. I could listen to Caruso all night long. I could listen to Del Monaco. I could listen to um, Corelli. I could listen to anybody, but I didn't know how to do it. So, so I didn't know how to perform the, the, the deadlifts without breaking my lower back. Right. So um, after a very very successful. Uh, sort of UK experience in which uh, I made my professional debut only a year after I started studying. Mm -hmm. So I made my debut in, in, in Kent um, singing uh, the Zauberflöte, the, the, the magic flute in German <laughs> without, <laughs> without having any notion of German whatsoever, right. you know, so much so that I forgot the entire third act. I mean, <laughs> it just, blacked out totally and I made it up but nobody noticed and uh so, so you get to realize that that production it was right. like I was I was Spanish um and I was singing in German and then because it was a sing spiel so you you have to talk as well so yeah. there is there are spoken parts the spoken parts were in English man that was the the uh, you know um how do you call that the the, the 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 this tower you know uh babel's tower you know the, the you know babylonia it was like the 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 first base was italian the soprano the queen of the night was portuguese the one of the priests was french the papageno was irish so the mixture of accents was how could anybody understand anything right yeah and uh and there it was uh, that was my first experience with an orchestra. Um, and uh, to be honest, I, I remember, you know, I, it's something I would never forget. I was, I was backstage just waiting for me to come, uh, you, you know, onto, onto the stage and, and having the feeling that I had, I had been doing this for my, for my entire life. Like, okay, yeah, this is me. This, this is what, what, what yeah. this is who I am. 
And um, I based basically my I studied uh, my, my magic flute, which is some is, is, is Mozart. So mm. you know, usually it's given to very light voices in a way. But uh, there, there was this very famous German tenor called uh, Fritz Bundelich, uh, who yeah. you know people said that. Well, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I've listened yeah. to him so many times just on YouTube. Yeah. And I'm like, what a beautiful voice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and he was very Italianate, you know. He he, you know, if you compare, you know, again, I think it's a question of uh, you know, voice placement, you know, because of the language. But Wunderlich wanted to sound Italian, and that's what drawn me into that. So I I focused my 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 hmm. magic flute trying to uh be as Wunderlich as I could. Um and it worked. It, it it was very good. I I mean, at least I was very happy. Uh, you know, critics were, were were quite good and whatnot. And that got me, for example, like gig in in Covent Garden, not in the main stage, but in 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 the opera house. And uh, that's when my, for example, my family realized that this was not a fantasy. Yeah. That this was like, hey, he's serious about this. You know, I mean. The boy is is working his ass off, oh, yeah. and uh, somehow it's working. Now, um, I sang in the UK, and I I, I did, yeah, I did uh, very many productions, and um, but always in that sort of lightish repertoire. So a lot of Mozart, a lot of uh, Donizetti, uh, French light repertoire, um, Rossini, for example, you know. Um, but there was, you know, my temperament was like, give me more, you know, yeah. it was, I was constantly told you are too loud. You are too loud. Even when I sang the Verdi Requiem, uh, the, you know, the, the, the conductor, no, you're too loud. And I had to say to him something, you know, very poetic, you know what? Verdi is trying to talk to God. <laughs> How can you tell me to be quiet? You know, and the, this kind of thing. Uh, so in my mind, there was this feeling that although I was a lyric tenor, there was something missing. Right. So uh, next step was Belgium, because uh, in the UK, had I stayed in the UK, uh, you, you, yeah, you have Common Garden, then you have uh, Scottish National, you have uh, Welsh uh, National Opera, but opportunities are limited. You know, small companies and and you know and i said okay why don't i go to central europe and i start from there so there was a an opera studio uh from the flemish you know the basically belgian opera uh establishment um so i joined the that opera studio which is basically a master's a master's degree and um we prepared basically several uh, operas and projects and whatnot. After my my studies at the Guildhall, I had learned. You know, I did the opera course. I did the the, the postgrad, the, the the opera course with two years master's degree. So I moved to Belgium, and uh, at some point, the last basically production was um, a smaller version of Carmen called La Tragedie du Carmen. But it's basically Carmen, but you know they 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 basically took out a few ensembles, but the tenor basically has to sing everything, and uh, you know we both know that you know Don Jose is not a pussy. I mean that you you know the the orchestra is just giving it, and uh, and and you you have to be meaty. It's, it's beefy. Uh, I had the top. But I didn't have the middle nor the bottom. And always the, 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 the criticism came from the middle voice, you know, and the bottom. Why? For something you and I, we have talked before. I was saving the whole time. I was saving, saving because of my... So the top, exactly. the top would kill. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I said, no, if I give too much in the middle, and mind you, this was, th th this advice came from a very famous tenor. A tenor called uh, Rockwell Blake, which is a Rossini oh, tenor, very famous. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely awesome. 
But the guy could afford that because he was a very light tenor, but I wasn't in a way. And uh, so I was sitting in the middle voice and then you could sort of hear a gear change going to the top, the top would bloom, and then I would go back and, and disappear in a way. So there was this guy, Mario Sandri, which was a, was a tenor, a uh, Belgian tenor, uh, sort of a lyrico spinto, big, big guy, big dude. And uh, he had studied with McCray. And he heard my Carmen and I said, Raf, can I be honest with you? And I said, yeah, sure. Shoot. And, and, and he shot to kill, right? And he said, you know, your middle voice, you know, and, and the bottom, it's not working. It's not, it's not working. And I said, yeah, I know. I know. I mean, I've been hearing the same thing over and over again. So what do you want me to do about it? I said, well, you know, there's this guy. You know, and I said, yeah, there's this guy, you know, in The Hague, The Hague, you know, in, in the Netherlands and uh, Holland. And, um, and, and this guy studied with Mario Del Monaco. Of course, my eyes went like, whoa! And then he said the famous phrase, and he even has Mario Del Monaco's boots in his studio. <laughs> That's right, you said. Right? Exactly. And I said, you know, fuck me. Well, Anything only about the boots. <laughs> exactly. Where are the boots? You know, I just, I just want to see the boots and lick them and, and kiss them. And <laughs> if I can steal them, you know. Uh, so I, I said, okay, I was, I was kind of intimidated, right? So it had to simmer, it had to simmer and it simmered for almost, I would say a year, oh, wow. a year. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I had heard, uh, you know, different opinions about McRae right. and uh, McRae singers and, and, and whatnot, you know, that it was a very drastic, very sort of aggressive approach and, uh you know the typical things i mean you have detractors and then you have people that you know right. you just it's like it's like anything i always say you know uh you know you're not a, a jar of nutella you know you cannot not everybody can love you you know people are either love you or hate you and you cannot change it yeah so it took me about a, a year to make up my mind what happened during that year uh, but basically, I was alone. I was I was very lonely in Belgium, with very little work. Uh, an agent in Amsterdam that wanted me to become a, a sort of a, a, a tenore buffo, right, to do comic roles. And I said, "Dude, I mean, this is over. I mean, if this is not what I want to do." And uh, out of desperation, basically, I I agreed, right, and I said, "Okay, Mario, you know what? I'm gonna take, uh, you know." I'm, I'm going to take you in that. Uh, so we went to the, to the Hague. <laughs> and oh man, it was surreal. I went there. And uh, honestly, I was just, just outside the building. I could hear something. You know, there was an elephant. There was a, an elephant inside that building. And I said, what's going on, man? And there's, that, there's noise there. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it, you know. Okay, so we start going up, you know, going up the stairs. And I start to identify the noise. The noise was a voice, yeah. but a voice, <laughs> a voice that I had never, ever heard in my entire life. Wow. I, it, was, it was this, I, I can't really describe it. It was the vibration. It was not only the voice, the vibration, you know? Yep. Um, uh, I mean, I placed my, my, my hand, I know this sounds very poetic, but, but honestly, but that's how I remember it. I, I placed my hand on the door of the studio and that sucker was vibrating. It's like, and it's like, oh my God, prepare yourself to die. Right. So I opened the door and I find, you know, this guy blasting his way through Otello. Amazing. His name was Jerun Big. They must have called him Big for something. And uh, the, 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 the voice was just like, how the hell do you do that and not die trying? I mean, how, how can you sing two, two phrases in that manner, right? The guy sang the entire opera. 
And I believe he could have sung it again from the beginning. <laughs> it was just surreal for me. Wow. So after that, Mr. McRae, you know, who was a gentleman, you know, he was uh, a very tall dude. I mean, I think at that time he must have been 70. Yeah, he was in his 70s. Uh, He was a a war veteran. He was, he he fought, he was a, uh, he had been, sorry, uh, he was a um, Marine Corps uh, veteran that fought in, in the Korean War. He was from, so he was a, where was he from, like Ohio or something? Right? Yeah, he was from Ohio. Yeah, he was from Ohio. From uh, uh, Irish sort of, uh, you know, uh, roots. And he was very proud of that. Um, and, and he was very funny because when you heard him speak, his voice was really soft. Yeah, honestly, he was like, not a whisper, but he was really soft, gentle, very nice. Uh, but man, when he demonstrated, I mean, your, your pants just, just, just dropped. And when he demonstrated, so there, there's a thing, you know, a lot of times, uh, and we'll, yeah. uh, now we're going to probably start getting, getting into the technique here. So, you know, from what I, you know, I've studied, you know, for many, many years with, with many, mm. probably, you know, 20, 30 teachers, like, you know, just checking. Right. I would move to a new place in the United States. I'd get a gig. And then who's the new teacher in this area? And uh, right. who's the teacher in this area? And then I move there. And when you get to LA, you, you hit like, you know, there's a teacher every three feet. So, <laughs> you know, one of the things was a lot of the teachers I studied with, I would say half, more than half, didn't demonstrate. Yeah, man. It would demonstrate oh. like a little little piece of this, little piece of like a, a little bit yeah. of a scale. And there was one, there was one teacher I picked from, and he was a master vocal coach. And, uh, you know, I went to him because I couldn't, I, I couldn't get in to see my teacher. I was living in the Valley at the time, or no, I was living in like Anaheim and I couldn't get into LA because I didn't right. really deal with the traffic and I couldn't get to, I was going to go see Seth Riggs, who I would study with once in a while. He's kind of the known, uh, one of the big known teachers in the United States. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Not in his 90s, very sweet man, has helped a lot of people. He knows a lot about the voice, and he's a very sweet, sweet man. And uh, I, I wanted to get in to see him. I was having some problems. I had some gigs coming up, and I was just nervous, you know, and I was like, ah, I, I should get 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 some studying in again. I couldn't get to him. He told me to go to this other guy that was like his f- fifth-level master guy, and he was close. Right. And during that lesson, it was just it was. It's just really bad and, you know, making funny little sounds and very light little sounds and everything was kind of falsetto-y. And, and then, then we started working on the rep that I was doing and I was, I forget what I was doing. I was doing a journey song, I think. And I said, Hey, right. um, I couldn't, I was like, and he was like trying to get me to do it through a, through, through an exercise. And I said, well, could you demonstrate it for me? I said, if you demonstrate it, I'm usually, I'm better at that. I've been a musician my whole life. So I'm like, I'll pick up, maybe I can kind of feel what you're doing. And he looked at me straight in the face and said, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't sing that. And I just went, so why am I here and why am I paying you all this money? Absolutely. It doesn't make any sense to me. And so yeah. that is a big – there's a lot of uh, back and forth with people that say, no, you don't need to be a good singer to, to teach. Maybe you don't mean to be a good singer, but you need to be able to demonstrate your method of what you're teaching and show that it works. It works. Yeah. And it works. That's what a method is. A method works, right? That's the way it should be. So well, you go to McCray, I, I, and say he's got this really sweet voice, and then he opens yeah. his mouth and to demonstrate a, a line, yeah. or whatever he's teaching, or a technique, and he blows your head off. Absolutely. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, to that, I mean, sorry to interrupt, but I, I have always said that, uh, you know, the greatest singers perhaps um, are not the best teachers understandable true true story understandable. uh and there are many many examples like, but yeah, like babe ruth you know babe ruth probably couldn't teach you how to hit but he was one of the greatest ball players of all time but he probably you, would, you know he wouldn't know he'd be drinking partying and I'd be like, i just swing the bat exactly just swing the bat and it just i happen to have that timing you know yeah, yeah. but i mean you as a you know if you're going to teach you better be able to yeah. demonstrate what you're teaching and how it w- works. Not like, True story. like not, no, I can't. <clears throat> do that. Maybe I won't like the sound of your voice. That's, that's in the ear of the beholder. Maybe you don't like the sound, but if the demonstration is there and it's very, and it's done correctly, it's like, Oh, well, at least I get it. I can understand. Yeah. 
that, that, that actually that was the whole motivation for me to create a like a YouTube channel and uh, demonstrate like difficult passages of areas in which people suffer and and told them listen I am not Franco Corelli I am not Mario del Monaco I am not uh, Mr Domingo but I can I can tell you how it's done because if I can do it you can do it right right I mean, I, I, I am, you know, okay, I had a, a very good career. Uh, you, got, you got cut short, but I had a very, very good career. And I know a thing or two, but you are totally right. I, I, totally, I totally agree with you. And uh, I have had, unfortunately, many unpleasant surprises, like this, this the same as, as you did. It's like, okay, uh, you know, teach what you, you know, what you preach. Right. Because if you don't, Right. It's, it's, it's the same as a personal trainer, right? I mean, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, you go, oh, my personal trainer, he has to be like, do stop, you know, ah, no, but at least he, he must show that he's athletic. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, you're gonna you know what I mean? Yeah, it's gonna, you're going to hurt yourself. At least show Absolutely. me a yeah. proper, proper deadlifts so you don't exactly. hurt I don't hurt myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Totally. So, um, so yeah, so so what happened is that after Jerun Big, uh, you know, sang the crap out of Otello, Mr. McRae is, you know, gets up in this very gentleman manner and says, "Hello, how do you do?" And said, oh. <laughs> "I didn't even know what to say. You know, I was still thinking about how how is it possible?" Uh, oh yeah, um, well, thank you. You know, very nice to meet you, sir. And, and then I, I sat down there and I heard, I don't know if it was two or three or four tenors and the same thing. I mean, di different colors, right? So it was not like he created clones. No, 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 no. Everybody had their voices, but there, were, there was something common to every single voice. The voice was massive. The voice was super organic. It's like as, as if you could see the voice. You could see what they were doing. Mm. And uh, to be honest, it took me, you know, every single of them, they took me back to Caruso, Del Monaco, Corelli. You know, it's like, okay, this is it. This is it. And, uh, and again, sometimes my craig would demonstrate. And, 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 to, and, to, and to see somebody and, and listen to somebody in his 70s singing a massive high C going like that, you know, something like that, Boom! and the whole room with it's like, holy crap, you know, uh, he he must know what he's doing, right? There's video out there of uh, uh, Nikolai Martinucci doing, right. demonstrating, demonstrating for uh, students, he's, going to yeah. he's sitting down and he asks for a little sip of water, he takes a yeah. little water and then just rips your face off, and he's, like, <laughs> yeah. he's 78 years old or something, you know, it's yeah. like, Oh my god. Yeah, uh, there is there is another one because I used to write I, I used to write to uh Maestro Martinucci. He's a, he's a great guy. He's awesome. And uh there is another clip in which he's smoking actually. <laughs> he's smoking. And he says, "Okay, yeah, no, not this way." And then he makes this massive noise and then he's smoking and you go, "How the hell?" Man? But anyway, um so I was in that beautiful studio um you know, grand piano whatnot. And uh, after listening for hours and hours to this uh, tremendous, talented people, you know, Timothy Simpson, um, I was, I think it was Mark Morales. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't remember the names very well, but uh, all of a sudden he says, okay, now it's your turn. And I said, well, my turn to what? You, you want me to wipe the flat or something? You want me to, you know, no, to sing. And, and, and he's like, are you nuts? I mean, I mean, don't, don't embarrass me. You know, I, I, I come, I came here for help, Yeah, yeah you know? Yeah. So now come on, come on, show me what you got. And I said, okay, here I go. You know, I'm with my tiny, teeny voice, you know, una furtiva lagrima, again, saving on the middle voice and then trying to place whatever. I sang a, a little bit of furtiva lagrima and he stopped me. And I said, okay, well, that's it. He's going to kick me out. And I said, dude. But, but he said, okay, so what is the rest? And I said, well, I don't understand. Sir, what, what do you mean, what is the rest? He said, yeah, what is the rest of the voice? 
And I said, there is no more voice. This is my voice. And he said, no, that's not your voice. I said, what do you mean? He said, no, 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 that's not your voice. And, so we talk, and, we and that on the thing where the, the teacher I came to in Spain and studied a couple yeah, of them. When exactly, I my mom exactly. sang the first, you know, four or five lines yeah. of the song, he went, very, that's pretty. This is not your voice. And I yeah. was like, Same here. Yeah, that's so wild. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. But again, so I said, okay, so what, 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 uh, what do you want me to do? And uh, basically, it's what you told me. What was the first exercise you ever did? And say, okay, open your mouth. I open my mouth and stick out your tongue. And I go, out. and he said, okay, now do this. Ah, ah, ah. And I go, ah, ah, ah. And then, and then before I knew it, I was on a B flat. You know, with my tongue out, I was like, what's happening to me? So with, the glot with your glottal onset that everyone says is bad, you're doing this, yeah. and then me takes you up up to your B flat on that. Exactly. And uh, and I then I did, it, you know, the, the other exercises and stuff. And, uh, and then, you know, we, we started to get excited. His wife is there. His uh, stepdaughter is there. Some of the tenors are there. They start to see that I, I get like like I don't know warmed up or, or I get the, the I get the feeling that something is happening. We started with uh, you know um, una furtiva lagrima and we we ended by singing you know every aria in Rigoletto, you know that I had never sang in my entire life. Wow! Blasting it out like you know yeah I was tired but the voice was there. So he as you're doing these exercises he's having you do this mm -hmm. ad, ad, and we talked about. One of the things that yeah. I read all the time is he had you vocalize a lot on a deep, deep ooh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, so so what what happened is that he opened my pharynx. <laughs> that that's it. He opened my pharynx. My pharynx was was underused or not used at as at, at all as a main resonator. And once you open somebody's pharynx well wait for the result because you know it's a very big bony place and you can get a very big meaty sound out of that obviously after that you gotta shape it but the raw sound the raw is just sound. As, you're, as you're doing as you're doing your first bunch of scales with him and doing the as as you're going you know as, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing, as you're going louder Louder, yeah. more voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guy, the guy is, is 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 a beast. I mean, the guy is, is like you're in the Marine Corps, you know, and and he's like, come on, son, come on, you know, and your voice is doing all kinds of shit because you're using muscles that that you've never used. But the guy's like, come on, do it, and you go, oh, 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 and, and, and things that you've never done in your entire life, and uh, but but things are changing, and it's what I told you last time my voice in one session and i say you know i know they say miracles do not exist well i don't know if that was a miracle but my voice was never the same he just flipped it over 180 degrees and uh, i was like i was mesmerized i mean we were both mesmerized how many we fell in love with how many days a, uh how many times a day and how many days a week did you study for and then into the years you said yeah. you studied about five six years with them but how many yeah. how, how much would you study in your intro how much did you yeah. study okay um i mean he was a uh, uh, you know james mccray rest in peace uh because he passed away in 2018 um he Basically, I was I was I was halfway. Um, I was living in in Belgium, so you know to come back and forth from from Belgium to to the it was like I don't know a four hour trip, and it was pretty tiring and expensive to, to, uh, as well. So basically, he took me in. Uh, it's so it, it's so amazing that it, it, it sounds very romantic, but he took me in. I slept in his studio for circa two years. I lived in his house. Wow. I mean, his flat was, um, he lived in a building and he basically had a flat. And then on top, you know, like, like the attic was his studio. I slept in that studio for two years. And for two years or almost, I would say two and a half years, I, I studied five times a week. 
So five times a week. Five times a week. And how many? How long were the sessions? Hour and a half, hour? Hour, hour and a half. It depends. Because he took me, honestly, he took me as a son. He, 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 and, I, and I mean it. Sweet. That's rare. That's yeah. a very, very sweet because you don't hear about yeah. people doing. True story. I mean. People doing people favors. It's, imagine that. Man. Uh, he was uh, he was a very generous man. Uh, and uh, he, he took me. Yeah, he took me as a son. And actually, I was going to be his son-in-law because, uh, you know, being a tenor, you know, you do funky things. And finally, I, I got him. You know, I messed up because I, you know, his stepdaughter was very pretty and uh, anyway but yeah, that's uh, for another podcast anyway yeah exactly let's not go there anyway so um i studied with uh, james mccray for about five five and a half years basically the first two and a half i would i would go i would i would receive lessons like five times uh, five times a week and then uh, three times a week and when i was singing somewhere i would go back you know, and, 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 you know, so it was, it was constant. Right. So. If yeah. you were doing a, um, uh, a session with him, your sessions, you mm -hmm. know, your, 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 and you could probably even tell us how you do your sessions with your students. Uh, if sure. Know, if it's similar or not, but would he uh, do a, a, a 25 minutes, 30 minutes of vocalizations uh, again, opening your pharynx, doing those kind of things that right. do first, and then start working on rep, take a break, work on rep. How, how, uh, yeah, it, it, we had like I would say you know to to make it a bit simple we had two types of sessions one in which because McRae the, the only uh, I don't know disadvantage if you want to say is that he didn't play the piano he didn't yeah so he he didn't know how to play the piano he didn't play the piano so he he could not accompany you which, which is pretty pretty common I don't know why you know if you're a singing teacher you know the people now take for granted that you 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 need to know how to play the piano. Which, which I think is crap. I mean, I learned how to play the piano when I started teaching. Right. But during my, my career, I, I, I just, people play for me. So, so we had uh, um, sessions that were mainly focused on developing the voice, basically going to the gym, as I said, you know, going to the gym and deadlift and, and, and squat and bench press. And uh, basically you would do that for about... I would say 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And then you would maybe do a couple of phrases, you know, to incorporate, you know, because one thing is what I always say. And, uh, and it's funny because I, I, now I have a, a, a Japanese student, so, so sweet, fantastic, Rinosuke, who is also a karateka. So we have many things in common. Uh, apart that I'm studying Japanese. Whoa. So, um, uh, and I tell him that, uh, you know, in, in karate, you have kumite, which is fighting, and then you have the kata, which are the forms. And I, I always tell him, the exercises are the kata. Are, those are the things that are going to teach you. And I think I, I recently show a, a video of yours, and I liked it very much, in which you said, you know, technique is what allows you to forget about everything and anything when you are singing. When you're singing, you're just singing. You're not thinking about, oh, I have to do this. Or, no, man, because then what? It, first of all, what is the artistry? And and you're gonna you're gonna go bunkers. You're gonna go nuts. And that is what had happened to me, uh, uh, you know, previously. Previous. Because I was constantly thinking, oh my god, there is an A flat coming. What do I do? Right. Yes. Now with McRae and and and, and Meloki and the exercises, basically they built your voice and they taught you what to do. So by the time you started singing, it was there. It's already it was just, automatic. it was just there. Automatic. Um, I'm looking over my paper. I'm just going to ask you questions. You sure. Yeah. So with the technique we talked about, did you talked about the, um, the deep Ooh, you also talked about yeah. the, the ah with the tongue out of the mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, he, did he, or did you, um, Work with okay, so we know we how we, we uh, you know all the schools of thought. We talk about head voice, chest voice, mixed voice, yeah. you know these kinds of things. Do you what, did everything you did, to put it simply that um, did most of the exercises or all the exercises stem from the chest, or did you separate mm -hmm. and do some deep falsetto head voice? Uh -huh. Very interesting. 
Okay, so basically, and uh, actually, uh, I am going to recommend a channel uh, on YouTube called the Op Opera Archive because it's very knowledgeable, right? So, you know, because it compares voices from the past and voices from the present. And uh, I came across one, one, one video in which he, he talked about, you know, Beniamino G, Beniamino G, G, G and uh, Corelli and Del Monaco and, and then compared to modern uh, uh, tenors and so on. Everything, basically, see, the concept of passaggio, forget about it. There is no passaggio. There is no break. Why? Because in a way, you are singing everything in chest. And, but let me explain. Oh, why, are you singing, why are you singing everything in chest? Because you are using the whole mass of the vocal folds the entire time. So the whole mass of, of, of the folds are vibrating from, from bottom to top. So you, you know that, I don't know, I mean, I, uh, McRae never explained this, okay? McRae was just, you do this and you do that. But me being the nerd, did he, I am? Did he ever speak of covering of some called exactly. to cover, yeah, yeah. some call to turn exactly. the voice? That's know. it. That that's what happens depending on your uh, voice type, you know, and also if you're a, a man or a woman. There is a moment in which you have to do something, a maneuver, whatever you want to call, to um, you know, to 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 start going higher, right? That it, it would be the equivalent of passaggio you know and whatever what is that maneuver basically he called it you know covering right mm -hmm. and the way he explained it was you know the, the 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 technique is called tecnica di affondo which means lowering the larynx now science have, have proved that the larynx doesn't really actually go down but the the larynx tilts and and you can find that in in for yeah. example Joe Steele and all that. I mean, modern contemporary stuff yeah. that, you know, but I don't care if you want to, if you want to think, you know, singing is a language of fantasy. So if you want to think that the, the larynx goes down, think about it, but don't do it artificially. See, we talked about Kaufman and we talked about Kuda and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, by thinking that, at, you know, for example, for a tenor around an F sharp, or an F, F sharp, depending if you are uh, like, a, like a, a light tenor, a lyric tenor, or a spinto tenor, or a dramatic tenor, you're going to cover earlier, right? Right. But McRae always, always, even for baritones, and it's something that I teach nowadays, I'm have, I have basses that can go from a bottom F all the way to a B flat, like if they were tenors. Why? Because I strengthen their voices in a way, and I'm not hanging any medals. I'm just talking, you know, it happens. He encouraged us to sing as open as we could without covering, so we would strengthen the muscles, you know, the, the pressures and, 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 and the whole thing. So by the time we covered, it was, it was not a, 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 such a radical maneuver that you would hear these, rrr, rrr. no, he, he was against that. Um, so basically, I, I, I mean, for example, I remember singing Ballo in Mascara and being sick, and I sang it entirely open, open, the whole opera, because my voice wouldn't cover. So I sang B-flats open, because I couldn't cover. If I covered, it cracked, so open. How could I do that? Because he had taken me right. open all the way up. Uh, but he didn't recommend to sing open. Right, 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 right. Okay. It was uh, like, like maybe for an effect. So around, you know, for a tenor, around F sharp, F, F sharp. Right. You would, like he said, you have to think that your, your vocal folds go down like this. That's and that was it. so funny. I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd too. And that's how I try to explain it to my students. I'm like, you kind of go from here. And then when you get there, ba -bum, they go like this. That's Obviously, Bravo, me too. not what happens, but that was, it's yeah. a good way to kind of understand it. Yeah. Yeah. And then if they ask you, actually, what is really happening? Then you say, okay, that thing of lowering, what is happening is that your, your larynx is tilting and is stretching the vocal folds. So it's easier for them to vibrate with a lot of subglottal pressure, right? So the difference between that and mixing head voices and all that is that 
uh, with, with Meloki, the whole mass of the folds is vibrating. So you can say you're singing in chest. And in those sort of mixed uh, voice kind of things, only part of the folds are is vibrating mm -hmm. and it is uh, it's a huge difference in the in the sounds in, in 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 the especially in the in the top that's what the italians called squillo squillo right. is like the 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 the, the pin the twine right. but it is very different and you know there is a a, a recording of uh, carlo bergonzi singing uh, o paradiso by major beer and he goes to a b flat and then there are recordings from this opera archive line. It's excellent because it's like, wow, man, yeah, finally somebody understands this. What you um, achieve by, by using the entire mass of the folds and then tilting the larynx like that and opening the pharynx is a sound out of this world, yeah. out of this world. And you don't have to be the Monaco to do that. Right. You don't have to be a superhero to do that. No. And it With also, training, and, you know? you, and you also feel that this, because some people would be like, "Oh, that sounds going to make me. I'm only going to be able to sing for 15 minutes. I'm only going to be singing for a half hour." And you're like, "No, no, no, no. Once you strengthen oh. these these muscles, this the the way you do it, you could sing for hours and you'll be fine." Uh, absolutely. And McRae always insisted, you know, I am teaching you this exercise or this method so you can sort of not survive but you can go through the opera because it's, it's all about athleticism so you are an athlete and singing an opera you know maybe you know especially if you're you're in the german repertoire sometimes those operas last for eight hours you know and i've sang i've sang long operas you know which you're singing you're on stage maybe for four hours i think i i think i dozed off in don carlo <laughs> my wife got my wife totally fell asleep it was the full <laughs> it was the full one because i know they do a <laughs> yeah. yeah the one with the with the, with the five <laughs> acts in valencia we did i saw in valencia with domingo was, was singing baritone like like five years right. ago, four years ago something like that yeah and, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think i dozed my wife yeah. fully fell asleep <laughs> i'm i must confess i must confess um i loved being on stage but rarely ever you would see me in the in the audience yeah. because i you know it, you know i was not easily thrilled but but it is what i'm, what I'm what, you know you know at least you know mccray who basically uh studied with with uh, with mario del monaco in his villa in lanchenigo and with his wife rina del monaco because it, there is a very interesting story right i mean it's an anecdote uh, Mario del Monaco, he was, you know, this character. I mean, he was so, oh man, I mean, he was just one of a kind. So uh, he, he started with Meloki. Then he joined the army and he did, excuse my French, Faco. He just started messing around with his boys and doing all kinds of things because he was fatso, you know, a bit like, like, like uh, Franco Bonisoli. And uh, of course, he, he basically, I wouldn't say he lost his voice, but he lost the path. And uh, then when he tried to come back to Meloki, Meloki said, no, 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 go away. I don't want, you know, it's a bit like Bruce Lee and Ip Man, right? <laughs> so I don't, I, don't, I don't want anything to do with you. And it was only because Rina, who was a soprano, but married, you know, they, 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 they eventually they married. They met in, in the conservatory and they, they, uh, they married uh, Rina Filippi. Oh, it was because of Rina that, that Meloki agreed to continue teaching Del Monaco. Wow. And after uh, Mario died, unfortunately, after the car accident and all that, she continued teaching. She taught people. And so McRae studied both with Mario and with Rina oh, until, wow. until he, did, he needed no more. Right. And, and also, and this is, this is also interesting because I, I made a video about it, uh, because, uh, you know, being from Ohio, he uh, sang a lot in the United States. He had, because I, many people write to me about this, um, they, they told me, that they, they asked me about the difference between Stanley, you know, or, or Lo Monaco. Um, yeah, Douglas Stanley. And, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, Meloki. And I say, well, actually, uh, I believe that um, McCray 
taught us a few concepts of Stanley because they were very similar. Yep. But I would say that Stanley being more sort of uh, scientific and uh, he actually, he did manipulations. And I remember once- Not with the tongue and the jaw. Exactly. That that was non non that didn't exist in 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 uh, in the Meloki sort of that I learned. But I remember once uh, James James told me, "Okay, now yawn." So I yawn, and obviously my my larynx just dropped, and he jumped his hand onto my 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 larynx. He pulled down because I I asked him, "What is Stanley? Can you tell me about Stanley?" And said, "This is Stanley." Come here. Boom. And he dropped my larynx. He held my larynx down and said, now sing. And I sang. And this sound came out out of nowhere. I think it's the biggest sound I've ever made. And I was like, whoa. And then he removed his hand and the sound was still going. Whoa. It was like huge. Wow. And then he said, that's Stanley. And I say, so why don't you use it more often? And he said, because it's a bit dangerous. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, me neither. But for him, he was like, he was, he was like, no, no, I don't mess around with that. So he didn't believe in, in, for example, separating registers. We would do exercises and use falsetto. Okay, so that's, but, what, that's what I was wanted to get, get to because, yeah, I've yeah. always believed in that. I, I think it's helped my voice through the years um, yeah. in, in a certain a certain way. But I was wondering, did you have you done any, you know, the deep ooh falsetto? Ooh, those type of sounds. Only as a vehicle, right, to wake up head resonances and then drop them, drop them. Like if it was a parachute Bye -bye. to enrich your chest voice Understood. so you would go basically something like la ooh, ah. oh yeah, right, so right, boom. Right. yeah and then you drop it yeah and slam it in exactly yeah and you hammer yeah um so he didn't you know at least the the the, the meloki i learned was nothing there is only there are only two sounds open and cover right and and you should sing open as much as you can right. and then cover slightly and and then you know that's it and and again support apoggio oh yeah so we never talked about that today so we don't really have to talk about that but let's get to it so i would ask you a question i would say what did you learn about breathing and support and then you would say nothing <laughs> actually <laughs> actually what i learned is that the, the at least in the, the meloki uh technique or philosophy uh and there is a video of uh Paris de venturi who was uh one of the last students of Meloki is that the apoggio, the support is actually in the throat right. because that's the origin of the voice. The they would say like leaning on the uh -huh. larynx. Yeah. Exactly. But if you then read, for example, Lamperti, right, which is yep. a very old school, yep. he, when he talks about the lotta vocale, which is the, the, the fight, struggle. right? Yeah, the vocal struggle. The struggle, right? It, it is almost the same, but he doesn't, you know, it was like they were afraid about talking about the throat. Uh, everyone's talk about the throat. That's the problem. That everyone yeah. if you say that to everybody. They're like, they're like, oh no, you sing from your head. No, you sing, yeah. you sing from here. Like I go, you sing. Everything is here. Everything without yeah, that, you don't sing. You have to have one of these. Yeah. Hey, totally. You have to put one of those vibrating things against your throat and talk like this. You know what I'm yeah, Exactly. If you don't, if absolutely you're anything from here. So that's uh, that's always been very i mean the the amount of teachers i took from that just the, you should feel never feel anything nothing <sighs> i'm like that doesn't right. make any sense you got to feel something yeah like, i mean i i i made a video you know comparing uh for example alfredo kraus and we talked about it you know and said no the support is in the mask and I said well man no it's a resonance right you cannot Apoggio in the no man the voice where where does what what is the origin of the voice the vocal folds yeah so you have subglottal pressure and then you go against it and that's when you where you keep the balance right and that's it uh, and we would do hypopressives and 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 things like that you know very weird exercises implosions you know <laughs> you know and you go like wow what the fuck is that and it's actually that lotta vocale right in your throat so you just did that. such a clear sound you just did yeah like very, very you kind of coughed 
Yes. And then made a tone. Do it exactly. one more time. Do it one more time because I that Okay, and and I can do it hard. <laughs> Yeah, very. And what I'm doing is I'm directing uh, inwards. So I'm, I'm, I'm going inside and down. And that's it. And the deep blue is exactly the same. It's what we used to call uh, kindly the shoe on th in the throat because it would create a lot of tension. But it was like deadlifting, um, I don't know, you know, 250 pounds. Right. And then you grow. And, and you, three days later, when, when, because maybe you would become a bit dysphonic or hoarse, yeah. uh, your voice was like, what the hell happened to me? Right. Um, so th those things, you know, that people consider they're dangerous, right. I would say it's like everything. If you abuse them, right. by all means. But I have met more people that have been wrecked by this so you know, called mass and orientated stuff than, than this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I mean, that, that's, I, I've been a believer of this, these type of sounds. And I, I had a voice of that. I sang, I always say this, you know, on my podcast, everyone's like, shut up, stop talking about yourself. All right, go fuck yourself. <laughs> so, Come on, man. <laughs> but, but it's true. <laughs> like for many, 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 many years, I had a way of singing and I, you know, I did make a living singing, so that's nice. Maybe, you know what I mean? I think but it was more being musical. I could play guitar. I could sing. I could back guys up. But then when I really got down to what the voice was and I finally kind of figured it out, I was like, yeah. it's exactly what everybody told me not to do. <laughs> and now here I am at 52 and I sing much higher than I ever did, much longer than I ever could. And when you're young, mm. you sing for out. It doesn't matter. You got yeah, the exactly. worst technique in the world in your twenties, and tomorrow yeah. your voice is going to be fine because your body Absolutely. Is like this. But as you get older, your voice doesn't. It's not going to heal as fast, and that's what was happening for me from trying to sing the way I did in my twenties, and I just kept going. And my range <clears> had to go down, and I had less gigs anyway. And I was like, oh, I'm not even singing as much. Why am I getting tired? Why is my range decreasing? And I had to make, I mean, I was distraught. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life at that point. I was so scared. I didn't want to change mm. careers. I enjoyed what I did with my life. But yeah. you know, right when I just said, I think I, it, one of the things that I heard on, on YouTube, I can't find the video and it makes me so mad. It's, some, it's an older Italian guy and he's talking. He's like, no, you must. Eh, e, ah, oh, oh. And he's talking like that. And, he's, and it's like, yeah. I was like, I've never made that sound. Yeah. And, 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 that, <laughs> I, and I was like, there's got to be something to that because that guy was a professional. Yeah. And then once I learned, you know, he was talking about that sound and I was like, there it is, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, one of the Milwaukee exercises is basically using, you know, a very modern concept, which is vocal fry. Right. But, but actually to, to enrich your voice or so vocal fry, you know, and I use it many times when, 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 when they call it the, the landline, I like very much picky blinders, right? So I pick up the phone and said, Hey, what do you want? You know, I'm Tom Shelby. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill you. Okay. Great, great right. show, by the way. Love that. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love, I, love it. I love it. So what, what you do with that? And McCray insisted that vocal fry has to be present throughout your entire range. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, one of the exercises that we, we do is basically you go like this and you you go like this like la just like that yeah. and you go up to uh, I mean you change vowels around maybe you know you start with an a you change to an a semi e and then you go to an o when you are basically above what you would call the passaggio and and and, and man that builds your your the, the bottom and the, uh, the the middle of the voice because that's the core of the voice. I, I can I can sometimes demonstrate and explain. I usually get do it all all the time. Explain to my students that if you start with a vocal fry and you don't let go, you can go right to whistle voice. Anybody, Absolutely, I, I agree. You can do it, and it works. And it's like yep. that was always what I was taught against. People yeah. didn't teach me these things at all. So. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting. Man. Very interesting. It's, good, it's good to be the black ship. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I didn't change. I'd be, in, I would have probably be working at the gas station right now or something like that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, I, well. I didn't switch up what I had to do, but that's really yeah. cool. Man. Um, 
Yeah. So, so that that's excellent. And um, how, where, how could people find you? How could people find you on the internet? Okay. Well, um, as I said, you know, I I have a YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, I don't know if, if the name is Meloki Master. Uh, maybe it is. Yeah, I'm gonna look. Yeah. Uh, because I have a, also an Instagram that is Meloki Technique. And um, and actually, you know, and I'm I'm gonna say it uh, publicly is I don't care. You know, I the comments are disabled because uh, I knew who was trying to shut me down. <laughs> so there's, there's 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 a there's a bunch of clowns on there right now. I saw something when yeah. I was trying to like bone up on today before I had to teach, and then I was like, yeah. oh, get a couple seconds in, do some, and someone had just put up a new thing about Arturo Moloki and. And, and the whole thing, yeah. and he and he tried to dog you on it, and I was like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna back, and I'm gonna like rip on the stage because yeah. it just it. I have, actually never, I never ever comment, but there's no reason. You you should leave your comments because you're gonna find yeah. people that want to that want to comment good things, and you know what? When those when you when those shitters come in, you just go whatever, get whatever to you. You can yeah, I know, but, but, but at some point, or yeah, not, I leave them, or I I I I just go whatever. It's no. It, they mean nothing to me. Where, what are you doing in your life? Are you are you doing what I'm doing? Because probably not. Yeah. Did you do? Did they have a career like you did? They probably did not. So. Yeah. I think I think you're right. But the thing is that at some point I said, you know what? I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my email address, which is mm -hmm. Meloki Technique at gmail.com. Right. And if anybody wants anything, just write me an email. And I receive emails every day. Yeah. Good. And uh, and all, I offer consultations uh you know every other day and then if they decide you know is that I, I i always i believe you know you you know in test drives you know so you get a test at the car so you know i offer consultations and then okay you want to study with me go ahead and now i'm extremely happy because i mean i have people obviously presential uh that that you know they live in spain but from all of nationalities but then i have uh, you know, people from Japan, people from Bulgaria, people from all over the place. And I, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, but yeah, eventually I'll turn the comments on again and stuff. But at some point I, I knew where they were coming because, you know, I told you, you know, that I was a naughty boy. And uh, yeah, but anyway, so. So Maloki uh, Technique at Gmail to reach you. Maloki yes. Master on YouTube, Maloki Technique on Instagram. Exactly. Great. Yeah, and and uh, you know everybody knows that I always answer. I you know it might take me a, a little bit of time, but I always answer. So and, and real quick, because I didn't get to hit you with some of these other questions, but I do. do I am running out of time. Um, no problem. Um, uh, diet. Do you have any special diet for uh -huh. something, or are you like ah, eh, eat what you want? Oh, what about in drinking? Do you like to have a couple pops? All right. Well, listen. I mean, the, the thing is that I'm a bit of a. A, a bit of a special case because um, unfortunately I developed, uh, you know, out of a, um, a GERD problem, you know, acid reflux, I, that, that's what, it, uh, that's why I had to retire. I developed a very serious, uh, um, like, um, this cancer sort of problem, okay? Uh, and thereafter, and during that period, because of the GERD, um i had to really watch out for the diet now i believe that every singer at some point is going to go through uh reflex problems yeah it's very be, okay so if uh, a word of advice uh regarding the diet well uh first of all and and uh, that's something that i i i i published in the in the in the last video you know, exercise, because exercise is good for you. You're an athlete. And nowadays in theaters, they appreciate your voice, but also your physique. And <laughs> hello. And that's something that I had to face because I'm, I'm, I'm quite short. I'm basically in, in, in inches, I'm like five, um, I'm five, five. Right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm be, quite short. We can all be Corelli. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. So, you know, I was the typical, you know, Mario del Monaco was 5'7", I'm 5'5". Five five. Okay. But uh, the era of the, excuse, you know, like the, the fat singers is, is over. Yeah. So you got to take care of yourself right. to begin with. Then alcohol. Well, you know, I, I always, I drank after the premiere. 
you know, I got totally wasted, but I know that alcohol basically drives you out. Yeah. So it drives you, your faults. So you got to be careful. So uh, Sue McCulloch, one of my teachers, used to tell me, okay, so whatever you drink, double it in water. Yeah. Why? Because you're going to dehydrate yourself. Yeah. Um, and for the rest, you know, a healthy, healthy diet. I mean, I'm a personal trainer. So I, <laughs> I try also, you, can't, you, you know, can't say, you know, French fries yeah. and pizza all day. Yeah, exactly. No, you can't. But, uh, but sometimes, you know, you're, in, you're, 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 you're on the road and, and, and whatnot, but just try to watch out and, and, and careful with the, with the reflux because it can really damage you. Yeah. That, 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 so careful with spicy food, yeah. careful with very heavy stuff. Uh, but for the rest, you know, I mean, just, just, just go with the flow. Everybody is, is different. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Are, are you in Barcelona? Is that where you are? Yeah. I am in Alica Alicante. It's, 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 it's on the coast. So you go from, from uh, Barcelona, you go down the coast, you know, it's the southeast coast. It's about, I would say, four hours from Barcelona. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Ah, look at that. <laughs> the feline friend. <laughs> I was just going oh. a week, so he, I got two cats and a bird, and they missed me a lot. So nice. So uh, well, I, I'm glad my my wife is not around. She's a cat lady, man. Oh, well, yeah. she loves cats. <laughs> Great. I'm glad we got to do this, and I am going to hit save right now. <laughs> yeah, and you do that. Wrote it. it. It should be on YouTube in another hour or so. That's brilliant. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. And uh, I appreciate it. I really do, man. No, Good to meet you. And I'm going to talk to you soon. I want to do a consult with you. Hey, yep. anytime, man. Anytime, anytime. And uh, really, I, I, I'm, I've been very honored. Thank you so much. No. And uh, just, just keep in touch. And anything you need, man, anything you need, awesome. you know, I'm, I'm here. And uh, just, just go bless. Yeah. Take care. Rafael Vasquez. Vasquez. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you bet it. Yeah. And uh, this has been Real Singers on Singing. I think it's episode number 19. And uh, opera singers do it better. I'm going to be doing a couple more this week. And actually tonight I'm I'm interviewing a uh, a soul singer, which is my favorite music. And I haven't had really any soul singers on. So I'm one of the, he sings for the Al McHale Stars. His name is Claude nice. Woods. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited to, 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 uh, to interview him tonight. So. Everyone stay tuned for that, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. And you stay on for one second. All right? Thanks, everybody. All right, man. Bye. Cut the recording.